Hello and welcome to the Weapon Core Basic User Guide. In this guide, we will go over how to use and read Weapon Core's UI, set up Weapon Core turrets and fix guns, read information inside its control panel, and use the toolbar functions of the guns. First off, what is Weapon Core? Weapon Core is a framework made by Darkstar that heavily improves upon and optimizes the combat of space engineers. Weapon Core itself doesn't include weapons, but works as a base for other weapon mod authors to use. Modders can use it as a base to make more types of armament only possible using it. These include multi-turreted turrets, composite weapons, and support weapons that can slow down opponents or disable jump drives to name a few. So, so how do we use Weapon Core? Quite simple. Place a power source, place a gun, and it should fire automatically. There we go. Now that the most basic setup is out of the way, we'll move on to the Weapon Core UI and how to manipulate it. First off, to lock onto a viable target, there are three ways. Holding Alt in first person, then looking at and clicking the target. Using mouse scroll and third person. In first person, it's as simple as looking around with Alt and clicking. Like so. The second method, mouse scroll, may be more tedious if there are many viable targets on screen since you would have to scroll through each one until you find the target you want to shoot at. The third method takes some more getting used to. To enable crosshairs, press control. If you would notice, the crosshair appears at the center of the screen. Not exactly useful because it is where your grid is. To remedy this, press and hold control and scroll to reposition the crosshair to where you find it comfortable. After that, it's the same steps as the first one. A less utilized but still useful feature is the secondary target system. Look at the target, hold shift, and click. This assigns a secondary target that you can keep track of. When you want to clear locks, simply press Alt and right click or Alt Shift. Now that we know how to look for and lock onto a target, let's take a closer look at the UI elements on the top of the screen. First off, the rangefinder. It shows how far you are from your target in meters. Next to that is the size indicator. This can be largely ignored, but basically, it shows the grid size based on some formula in Weapon Core. Now the icons. First, we have the skull icon, indicating target grid threat based on your current grid. This is on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest threat and 10 being the highest. This is also what determines which target Weapon Core automatically attacks first when in range. Higher threat, higher priority. Next is a target distance indicator. This shows the distance between you and the target compared to how far your weapons can reach. If the green bar is full all the way to the top, it means your weapons cannot reach the target. Third, we have the target movement indicators. The speedometer shows how fast the target is in relation to the world's max speed settings. The icon showing the ship with red green lines indicate whether the target is gaining distance or fleeing with the green line, chasing with the red lines, or stationary if it has the blue and red circled. And finally, we have the target shield indicator. Similar to how you see the regular shield UI on your own ship, the lines bordering show how much shield HP is left. Now for the real meat of weapon core, the weapon bay. For this demonstration, I'll be using Northwind Industries mainly as they contain the most varied weapons which include most functions necessary for setting up toolbar actions. However, I will also use MA weapons to demonstrate energy-based weaponry. Links to the mods in the description below. Turrets more or less need the same things as vanilla-based weapons, power and ammo. 
Some weapons, like lasers, will only need power to run but requires a larger amount of energy. For now, we'll stick with turrets that need ammo. Here is the 30mm CIWS or CWIS. First, let's ensure we have enough power to run, which we have, and check the weapon's control panel. Here we can see a whole bunch of information that can help you understand your weapons better. First off, power. All weapons will always require power to function. Some turrets may only need a connected power source, while others will require vast amounts. Next up, we have ammo. Most weapons, of course, need some form of ammo in order to shoot at things. We can check the required ammo inside the weapon's control panel again. At the bottom most part of the info panel, we can see the ammo ID the weapon uses. Using this, we can more or less get an idea of which ammo type is needed. We see here that the ammo name is C30 ammo. At a glance, we can surmise that 30 is in the ammo's name. Upon further checking, we can see alternate magazines. These are the different ammo types this weapon can use. This is another feature of Weapon Core, where guns can have different ammo types with the same weapon. Different ammo types can have different effects such as flak, high explosive, or armor piercing. In order to change the ammo of the gun, go into your G menu while seated, select the gun, and put in cycle ammo. Weapon Core guns have a different way of loading ammunition into the gun compared to vanilla, which may confuse new users. The gun essentially has two inventories. For simplicity's sake, we'll call the Weapon Core specific inventory the Breach. Weapon Core guns load an ammo item into the Breach when it takes ammo. This essentially makes the item disappear from the normal inventory and readies the ammo for firing inside the gun. Under normal circumstances, this ammo can no longer be taken out, so be careful when loading ammo and removing the gun. When we load other types of ammo, the gun doesn't take it in. The circumstance where ammo can be retrieved is when you cycle ammo. Weapon Core ejects the previous ammo type, then loads it in the new one in. As we see, I have switched to, to depleted uranium and spit out the standard ammo. And if we switch to CRAM, spits out the depleted uranium, and eats up the CRAM ammo. Now that we know how to ready turrets for use, we can now learn how to manually control turrets. There are two ways to do so, the vanilla control option and the weapon core manual aiming. For the vanilla control option, not all turrets have it. It all depends on whether the mod author uses it or not. However, some turrets still have it, like Northwind. Weapon Core's manual control has two methods, manual and painter. To use manual mode on turrets, select the block or group you want to use in manually in the G menu. Scroll down until you find control mode. Select it. Press the key where you put control mode in until it cycles to manual. With manual mode, you can use the weapon core's crosshair to manually aim at targets and press mouse 1 to fire on them. On moving targets, the turrets will automatically lead for you and will aim for where you are pointing on the crosshair. With painter mode, it acts similarly to manual but will automatically fire once the guns are zeroed in onto the crosshair. Turrets can also be set to target specific subsystems. To enable this, select the turret or group in the G menu and add both cycle subsystems and focus subsystems. 
The subsystem can target are offense, utility, power, production, thrust, jumping, and steering. The block types under these subsystems are in offense, guns and turrets, under utility, cockpits, antennas, upgrade modules, shield blocks, and remote controls. Under power, batteries, reactors, and engines. Under production, refineries, assemblers, and the like. Thrust is self-explanatory. So is jumping. And steering goes for gyroscopes. On the topic of subsystems, decoy blocks have also been given new life and weapon core. They can now mimic certain subsystems that you set them to. This defaults to offense when it's just set to blank. Take note that the decoy blocks will only become a valid target to saturate the subsystem type and not 100% make turrets focus on it. Setting up fixed weapon core guns is slightly different than vanilla. First, we need to set up some guns. Luckily for me, I already have one sitting right here. As with turrets, select the gun or group in the G menu and select toggle click to fire. Press the key you set it to and toggle it to on. Pressing mouse 1 should fire it. With weapon car though, we can select multiple different guns to be fired from mouse 1. Missile launchers are also set up in the same manner. However, these will track valid targets that are within the missile's range if nothing is locked on. There is no current way to auto-fire missiles unless you use scripts. After firing weapons, you may notice a small window that pops up on the upper right portion of your screen. This window shows weapon reload and heat levels. Weapons with sharp reload just has a circle with broken lines spinning around the ammo icon while guns with long reloads have it slowly encircling the icon. The blue or red bar some weapons have is the heat level. Once this bar reaches full, the weapon will go into overheat and be unusable until it cools down to roughly 50%. And with that, you should now be able to fully utilize weapon core guns. In the next video, I will cover how to use certain scripts with weapon core. Good luck and happy building.